Hello, Aternum, and welcome to KOTT News, Aternum's number one source for news. And this is the War Report. Dynamic change in the history of Aternum last night as the forces of unethical claimed the crown and kingdom of the Western Monarch's Bluff. KOTT News caught up with an unethical spokesperson about their victory and their intentions. It's over in a few moments, so I take it you were able to go out there without got confrontation. Uh, no, there was plenty of confrontation, a lot of healers out there, uh, a lot of a lot of people staring at us, some people shot mortars. My uh, my console actually ended up dying once because he's washed. Um, but yeah, uh, overall, pretty easy war. Strawberries, uh, strawberry was just too easy this time, you know? They weren't ready for it. Oh, shots fired to Strawberry, I see. Well, was there anybody who in your eyes really stood out in their performance tonight? Oh, absolutely. Cyan had a bow, and he was just shooting down their turrets left and right. I held my shield up for him to block the mortar strikes. It was a great time. Absolutely stunning performance by him. Well, let me ask you a civic matter. Now that you uh, have retained the rights to the monarchy, do you have any intentions for the Hamlet? Uh, no. No, prob probably not. Uh, as of right now, our governor and a bunch of our other people are just out pushing other territories, just looking for more wars. Moments later, KOTT News were able to secure an interview with Strawberry Leadership about their two outcomes. Yo, John, John, how did the interview? Where you at? I'm right here. You want to, you need, you have something you ready to talk about the fight? Uh, hold on. Uh, so what do I say? I mean, there's not much to say. That was not a challenge at all. Well, uh, they might say the same thing about Monarch's Bluff. Do you care to take us through your decision-making process for tonight? Yeah, we decided to throw... We decided to make a decision on ourselves and hold two territories. We yeah. decided to prioritize Evan's scale. We just let that, the roster out of fill. We're holding Airfall forever, though, John. That's the hope. I'm looking forward to it. You're fast approaching the Neverfall record at 13. Are you looking forward to uh, meeting it? Or hopefully breaking it? No, no, no. We're we're be, we're gonna aim beyond that. We're gonna set a record that nobody else can pass until the game dies. Earlier in Weaver's Finn, KOTT News were able to speak with Dodgers leadership about the state of their affairs. Congratulations on your victory once again here in Weaver's Finn, holding it down as you do. Would you care to take us through how it went down for you? John, we came out strong through A, through C. 50 v 50 on B, pushed up to the war camp in the end, just did our thing, you know. Was there anyone who stood out in their performance tonight? Uh, John, really, I gotta give the shout out to B Bonfire. Um, they really tried capping B Bonfire, but ain't nobody take our bonfire. That's ours. Turning to the weather and once more, the sun will continue to shine on throughout the day, keeping corruption at bay. But once more after sunset, the corruption invasion forces will rise up across 20% of the island. Another lineup submission for simulated fantasy combat resolution tonight, brought to you by LARPCO. Remember, if it isn't LARPCO, it's cardboard. Tonight, the Marauders of Iron Reavers assault the Covenant forces of Coconut Wireless for control of the bear-infested deep forests of Brightwood. Curious about the opportunity to fight a new opponent, Iron Reavers rush into the woods to test their might against the newly anointed Great House. The Zealots of Coconut Wireless have barely had time to assess the materials list for completion of the church, but they've upgraded the fort and are prepared to defend it. We'll have any late breaking outcomes and reactions from the citizens tonight at 11. Until then, this has been War Correspondent John Chalant, KOTT News.